Hey everybody, it is Mike. Uh, today is Friday. That means it's time for the Horror Freak 85's Fright Friday. Uh, these are He's done these for a while, but he, he had to take a little bit of a break because of some issues that was going on with it, his life. So he's back and um, put one out this week. It was on anthologies, and this gave me a reason to watch an anthology that another YouTuber named The Horror Maven suggested. Um, and sounded really good. And that is um, an anthology called Southbound. Southbound has five stories. They're all interwoven. Um, I liked each each one of the five stories, actually probably equally. Um, they were all good. They were all interesting. The first one is The Way Out. And this has uh, two men dashing away from something in the night um, obviously something pretty bad because they're covered in blood and one of them is injured. Um, while they are leaving, we see these... They, I, I say they kind of look like um, skeletal Grim Reapers floating in the air um, and going after, kind of following them. And as it gets lighter and lighter, they're more... Observ you know, the guys are starting to see them then, um, especially the driver. But he tries to keep the other guy calm. Um, uh, the one, the driver's Mitch. Uh, the other guy's Jack. So they pull up to this old gas station and diner to clean up. Um, very odd things going on in there as well. So they get cleaned up and they take off because they see these things and they're trying to get away from them. And they end up at the same diner and gas station figure that out. So they take off again and they drive really fast and they drive for a while and there's that same diner and gas station. And it happens one more time. Um, and each time those floating devils are hanging around. Um, so they decide to try going on a different route and it ends badly. Um, so and then there's a, another little part to the story where the passenger, Jack, um, just decides it's his fate, whatever's going to happen is going to happen, and he's led to this hotel room where he sees um, his daughter and hears his daughter's voice, and there's this whole repetitive kind of chase scene where he's trying to get to her, uh, but never does, and he opens the hotel door to look out, and the door immediately slams on his face, um, one of the creatures is there. And then another door at the hotel opens, starting the second story, which is called Sirens. It is about a girl band on their way to their next gig. They leave the hotel, and they're on the same stretch of high. You know, they're on that same highway headed south. Uh, they have a flat tire um, on the van, and they decide that, you know, they're just going to stay there. Uh, because nobody's stopping for them, and really there's nobody on the road. And then this car pulls up with this, um, the, you know, Leave it to Beaver parents kind of in there. Uh, is it June? And I can't even remember. I know it's um, June Cleaver, but I can't think of the dad's name. Anyway, so the two girls are all like, let's go, let's go. We can get some help, and uh, we don't have to sleep out in this van tonight and wait for somebody the next day. But the lead girl... Um, She's not real excited about that idea. Uh, her name is Sadie. Um, and Sadie's like, eh, I don't know, guys. I don't know if this is a good idea because these people are kind of weird. Um, but they talk her into it, and they go to these, this house. It's out in the middle of the desert. It's a really big, pretty house. But it's full of weird people. They're, they have a couple that live with them, and they have these two adult sons that look alike. Um, I guess they're twins. I don't know. One looked a little older than the other, but who knows. Um, all kinds of weirdness ensues, and Sadie ends up being uh, chased out of the desert, and she ends up on the same highway, and that leads us... Uh, the second part was called Siren. That leads us into the third part, which is called The Accident. A uh, man in his car is driving on the same dark stretch of highway, um, and 
and the, the uh, creature things are following Sadie, so they kind of started in the second half and followed her out to this highway, and this guy hits Sadie and injures her critically. So he's trying to get her help. Um, he calls 911. They try to tell him what to do to help her. Um, he's like, I can't do this. I need to find a hospital. And they said the nearest town is here. So he gets to the city. And there's nobody in it. There's no lights. There's no people. There's no cars, nothing. But he sees a hospital sign and he goes to the hospital. And there's nobody in the hospital. So then the 911 people are trying to talk him into how to help her leg and how to do this and do that. And there's a doctor on the line and everything they tell him to do just makes matters worse. So long story short, they just tell him there's some new clothes in the locker room, go change, and there's a car out back. It'll be like you were never here. And that's what he does. So as he's driving out of town, you see the floating um, Grim Reapers. And that leads us into our fourth part of it. It is, um, it is a show called Jailbreak. And what this one is, is when, as, um, Mark, as Lucas, the guy who hit Sadie, is leaving town, it kind of goes a little bit, the camera kind of pans through the town and you see this lady on um, a phone, cell, or like a pay phone, um, hanging it up. So you know she was one of the people that was talking to Lucas. And as he's gone, she walks into this bar to get a drink, um, but she doesn't leave the door closed. And there's this big brouhaha about the fact that she didn't leave the door closed, or she didn't close the door all the way and lock it. So... This guy runs in with a gun, and he's shooting stuff up, and he's saying, nah, 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 you know, I'm going to kill you if you don't help me find my sister. Well, he's an ex he is a criminal. He's out of jail. <clears throat> and he came looking for a sister who went missing years ago. Um, so these people in this bar, of course, are not human. So um, he doesn't kill any of them. He takes the bartender, the guy, and makes him take, because he says, I know where your sister is. So they get in this car, and they go to this place. It's like a, I don't know if it's like a whorehouse or what it is, but um, there's also tattoos being done, and it's his sister. So he's so excited and you know to see her, and he wants to take her away, and um, the bartender kind of says, well, that ain't happening. So he shoots the bartender like two or three times, and the bartender kind of turns into this animal, and then he blows the bartender's head off, takes the sister, they take off, they're being followed, chased, and the sister pretty much says, I, I don't want to go anywhere. This is where I belong. And they end up out in the desert, uh, like in the desert. There's no road left, so um, pretty much... Yeah, that's kind of the end of that one, what happens to the brother. And then the, little, the last one is called The Way In, and I'm just going to basically say this is about a family that's on vacation, because there's a twist in this. Um, and they are basically attacked by three um, people in masks, kind of like a, uh, what is that? purge thing or a strangers thing. Uh, you know, the father and mother are kind of tortured and different things happen and then the daughter gets away. Um, but yeah, it's it's a pretty creepy end. Uh, and of course, the whole time those floating things are in the air. Uh, so I highly recommend this. This was, this was a lot of fun. It was released in 95. Um, runs about 85 minutes long, I think. It's, it's not a real long movie. Um, it's directed by men and women, so some of the uh, some of them are, you know, so everything's a little bit different. But I have never heard of this, but I, I thank the horror maven for sharing it with us. Okay, that is it for my Fright Friday. As my cat is tearing something up, I'm going to let you go, and I'll talk to you later.